Well, let's get more in this night swaps with a team of ECG officials who are joining me in studio this morning. Michael Berry Machum Buedu is the General Manager of Revenue Protection. And Mr. Michael Kwesi Okai is the Manager in Charge of Technical Investigations at ECG. Uh, and they would give us a, a lot more to what they now started good morning to you gentlemen good morning. Uh, so so far how much have we saved i guess we refer to revenue then the man in charge of <laughs> revenue but how long have we been doing this for yeah this exercise has been sorry um good morning uh great. to your great listeners and we want to take this opportunity to thank you for giving us your platform to explain some of these things to the general public great. um this exercise has been going on for some time uh, ever since ECG started, I can say that we've been undertaking some of these uh, exercises or activities mm. to cap down on illegal collections and to also improve upon our revenue collection. But what has happened over the years is that all these activities which have we been uh, backing upon over the years, uh, it has not actually resulted adequately to reducing our losses. So this year, management has decided that we want to deepen the activities of our revenue protection and system losses so that uh, we will be able to go down significantly so that we'll be able to rake in more revenue. Now, just last Please go ahead. Last year, for instance, we were able to come down. We were able to come down on our losses by. When you say losses, yeah. what exactly do you mean? We mean that, you see, we buy power mm -hmm. from our suppliers. And we call it our purchases. So when we purchase the supply from all our IPPs, what we do is that we are going to sell the supply. So we have the purchase price and then the selling price. Mm. So if, let's say, we buy X amount, let's say 100,000 gigawatt or, let's say, 100 gigawatt energy, and then we sell, the difference between what we have sold and then what we, are, uh, we have purchased and what we have sold will constitute what the losses. Mm. Because when we buy, what happens is that we cannot account for all the 100% of the purchases that we have made. You have bought, let's say, 100, mm -hmm. but you cannot account for all Why the 100. Not? Yes, because we have what we call the aggregate technical, commercial, and collection losses. That is ATC and C losses in the distribution network. Mm. Because of the nature of the network, because of the nature of the network, the moment you purchase power, the, some losses occur because it runs through the system. Mm. That one is the technical losses. Mm -hmm. Then we have other losses we call the commercial losses as a result of we uh, distributing the power to the customer's premises through the metering activities, mm. through uh, the illegal connections that people make, unauthorized service connections, okay. and then also through other metering arrangements which are alien okay. to the network. So, Engineer Kwesiokai, I guess this is what this operation is centered on, what yeah. he just described. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what's the technical explanation? Are we just simply refusing to pay or we are connecting for free? Okay. Um, to add to what my engineer just said, um, we buy the power through carriers before it gets to the customer. Mm -hmm. end. So, Technically, the carriers, which are the cables, the transformers, the converters, take some part of this energy before mm -hmm. it gets to you. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to the customer premises, we meter. We use the meter to know how much we are consuming. So the meter connection and the installation also can result into some losses, which you call the commercial losses. Okay. But that's then, still very much technical. It's not because we are using it, we are not paying. Yeah. No, yes, let me put that okay. away. So I, I wanted to, because of time, I wanted to come to link it to the operation that you're undertaking now. Yes, yes. 
So what, what from where we are coming from, mm -hmm. the Revenue Protection Division, we are trying to um, look at the build energy, that is what we are giving to the customer, mm -hmm. of which they are supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. And then what we have bought, but we are unable to build to the customer. So we have on build energy and then the build energy. The on build energy is as a result of somebody connecting directly, somebody bypassing our meter, somebody tempering for our meter. And then the build is what we have already built to you. But you have decided not to give us the money. Okay. Uh -huh. So that is the area or the scope of our work. Okay. Is it easy to detect the unbuilt one? To detect the unbuilt one is where we have to um, pursue those people who are indulging in illegality. Okay. Somebody who has connected directly. Mm. Somebody who has bypassed our meter. Mm. Because these are the energy that we have not able to build. So that behoves on us to make sure that those who are indulging in certain legalities mm -hmm. were apprehended. Okay. So, Mr. Chumberi Mabwedu, the night operations, are you targeting those that you haven't built or those you have built but are not paying? Yeah. Um, you see, that one too is of twofold. Um, as a result, or due to the nature of our metry, we have customers who really have meters. We build them. All right. And then out of those that we build, you still have a certain number of customers whose meters are there, but they are not, we are not billing them fully, especially the high consuming customers. Mm. You find some of these customers that uh, maybe they are only, as a result of fidgeting with our system, we are only billing them maybe one third of their customer consumption. Okay. You see the trick. So it behoves on us to actually monitor, to find out why is it that this customer per his billing system, he's supposed to, let's say, pay X amount, but you see that he's, we are billing them on maybe X minus a certain mm. figure. So you're detecting these yes. things as the, you go on the, as on the operation? As we go on the operation, we okay. test with our instruments. Mm. So we visit your premises, we use our gadgets, we test to see whether all the load that we've been uh, that are, are passing through your system is registering on our meter. Okay. Where the differences okay is where we be, we bill you with the difference. So can we go back to my earlier question on how much we've been able to to gain from these operations so far? Yeah, as at uh, 2019, we have gained 54 million seven hundred and forty-two thousand seven hundred. And this is December. Yes, as at December 2019. Okay. Yeah, that is the total payment that we have uh, recovered so far. And, and this I this also includes the uh, during the Christmas festivities the operations that you 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 undertook. No, the, that, that does not include. That one was a different. Uh, that about one million Ghana cities mm. that we, we retrieved. Okay, but is this exercise sustainable? Yes. Who are you using in your operation? We have uh, RP staff in all the regions. Um, currently, we have eight regions, and each region will have staff who are responsible to embark on this exercise. So it's very sustainable. Do, do you have security as in police as part of the yeah, uh, operational yes, team? Yes, we do um, request for the assistance. Okay. Yes, because of the time that we have decided to embark on this assistance. Well, even broad daylight, I remember yes, your men have been chased upon before. the severity of the case on the ground, mm. we fall on the security agencies, like the police, the national security, or, or the attempt assistance. Okay. Have we had any prosecutions out of this, those who do the illegal connection? Have we successfully prosecuted anybody? Yes, we have. Um, just uh, on the 20th of December, uh, we... Uh, prosecuted, we successfully prosecuted uh, one person who was, his theft was uh, through the, what we call the smart card system. So, you know, he goes around, he comes to your house, he uses the card, those on prepayment meters, some of the uh, brands of prepayment meters, and then he can change your tariff with the card, the smart card. Let's say if what per unit cost is, let's say, one CD, they go around with these smart cards, they change 
they, they swipe it and they, they, you know, they manipulate the system and then it can cost you maybe about 20 pesos instead oh, of Oh, so they ones. help you pay less? Yes, yeah. they help you pay less. So that, that is why I say you have a meter installed. You can have a meter installed properly. Mm. But behind the scenes, though, that meter has been compromised. So when it happens that way, just the way you describe it, who are you holding accountable? Is it the local electrician who comes to do this operation in courts or the, the owner of the property? That in reality, is the customer that we know. It is, if we are lucky, and the customer owns up the person who comes to do it, fine. Other than that, we use the security agencies to be tracking some of these people mm. on our ways. Okay. And then they accost them and then... We so this person that you prosecuted, was, was, it, was, was he a property owner? Or this is just somebody who goes around to carry out... Yes, he's, he's somebody people. who goes around. So we had a tip-off and then we had to trail him. Mm. Uh, to well, there are times that people say these people are your own because, <laughs> I mean, these technical details, who would easily know them? Yeah, that's what they will come and see. <laughs> so Even was this person not uh, an electricity? He wasn't a staff. And there are times that you also outsource. Well, to us, as my boss just said, first of all, we're dealing, dealing with the account owner. That's the customer. But if we have information that there is somebody up there who is doing that, mm. whether you are staff or you are electrician, we we'll apprehend you. There are people, and I, and, and, uh, I have suffered this, so I know, uh, where your meter is not read for a very long period. Who is to blame? Yeah, um, if your meter is not read for a very long period, um, there are certain issues that may result to that one. Is your meter captured in our system? How would I know that? Yes, it happens because, you see, some people obtain meter outside of ECG. What I'm trying to say is that there are people who go around installing meters. At times, some of these meters are old meters which were in ECG system, and we remove them and replace them. That's postpaid meters, for instance, mm. and then we replace them with prepaid. Some unscrupulous pers persons are able to get hold of some of these meters, and then they try to recycle these meters into the system. So by the time we get there, you come, you see that the meter has been installed. He has maybe cheated you. He has extorted money from you. You have, uh, uh, you have, gi he's giving you the meter. But you find that the meter is never captured. Because that meter is not in our database. When we are going out to read meters, we only concern ourselves with those meters which are in our database. Because those meters were the meters that we installed mm. after the customers have paid the necessary fees. You understand? So that is where the challenge is. You find out that for most of these things, you come back and you find out that that meter is not mm. in our database. I remember one of the strong points you raised when you were introducing uh, the posts, the postpaid or the prepaid, 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 was to avoid some of these things. So why, because there are people who are still on the prepaid. Why is that? Are you talking about people who are still on the postpaid or the prepaid? On the, no, on the postpaid, yeah, okay. on the postpaid. Yeah, it's an exercise that is ongoing. We are still deploring uh, prepayment meters. But uh, there are times where the prepayment meters are not available. So we need to rely on the postpaid meters. Because if you need a supply and for the sake that we don't have a prepayment meter, you can't cry. Definitely, if the postpaid meters are available, we'll give them. So even from ECG right now, if postpaid is not available, you would give the... If prepaid is not available, you're going to give the postpaid? Yeah, if, it, if that one is available, we'll give it to you. Uh, we'll to be replaced in the future? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, but I thought that if you want to, um, if you, if you want to get everybody onto onto prepaid, then that would easily be available for everyone. Yeah, you see, uh, prepaid uh, is an expensive uh, venture. We call it smart prepaid meters. And you know, even with our smartphones, you know how much they cost in the local market. If you compare the, the, the cost of a smartphone with mm -hmm. those analog meters that, uh, sorry, uh, phones that we're using, it's, it's a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So at times, we are uh, pushed to use some of the uh, postpaid meters. Aside of that, you know, the government too is running a program called Self-Help Electrification Project. And the Self-Help Electrification Project, that the SHEP project, are all postpaid post meters. Mm -hmm. They are uh, electronic postpaid meters. Yeah. 
and they are of very good classes. You understand? Yeah, even though so, they are postpaid. So as it is today, can I opt for postpaid because I miss it? Well, depend upon where you live. live. Uh, we started the prepayment at metro, uh, metropolitan uh, mm. districts. Mm. That's why we still have the postpaid in the rural areas. But you know, it's not just a perception. It's cheaper. It's uh, cheaper with the uh, with the postpaid than the prepaid. The prepaid runs really fast. No, that that's not the issue. That's that's not isn't the it? Issue. it? No, you see, we have been hearing that people complaining that my meter runs very fast as mm -hmm. compared to the previous. That is not the, 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 the issue. If I should explain that, it's like, let's say we are all moving from Accra to Kumasi. And now I'm using, uh, let's say, any small car. And you are using a V8. Mm -hmm. You will get to Kumasi before I will get there. At the end of the day, we have covered the same distance. But because of the speed of your car, doesn't mean you have gone more far than me. Some meters runs 270 before one unit is recorded. Some have to run 3,000 before one unit is recorded. So it's the number of the revolution. Doesn't mean because yours runs um, 3,000, you are, you are going to be charged more than me. Mm. So it's it, how it's, it has been designed. Okay, so depending on where, where you live, you can opt for postpaid even though you're on prepaid. We will determine what will be good for you. Because our program, the prepaid is for, let's say, the cities, though some of the um, rural districts we have considered them. So if you apply for service and mm. it's within the prepaid zone, we'll give you a prepaid. Interesting. I, I think I live in a rural community. I should, <laughs> I should, I should, I should go back to postpaid. Uh, but is this exercise uh, discouraging people? Are people running to your offices to make payments voluntarily? Because ultimately, I guess that's what you want to achieve. Yeah, definitely that is what we want to achieve. We want to make sure that our losses go down. And when our losses go down, it, it will translate into more invoices being issued. Out. That is increase our billing, improve our billing, and then uh, our revenue will definitely go up. Uh, because uh, now that maybe we've had the opportunity to come out mm. since yesterday and people are now becoming aware, we believe that it is going to ginger a lot of people to come forward and to even those who are engaged in illegalities, I believe most of them will rethink mm. about uh, venturing into the illegality, maybe reverse all what they've done wrong, so that when these reversals are done, it will improve our building. And help the when people. is your next exercise? <laughs> our next exercise, I cannot maybe put it on air now, because okay. so as I mm -hmm. told you, it is we go there unannounced. Okay. Yes, no. I, I just wanted you to, to re echo that. I, <laughs> thank you very much, gentlemen. We wish you well with this exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had Michael Chumberi Mabwudu, who is General Manager Revenue Protection, and Engineer Michael Kwesi Okai, who's Manager Technical Investigations with the Electricity Company of Ghana. Maybe finally, what's the target for 2020? What are you hoping to achieve in terms of revenue collection? Well, let me speak about uh, the maybe uh, the revenue protection uh, reduction. As I said, our target is to come down to about 20% 20, 20 this mm. year okay. uh, through an aggressive revenue protection and loss reduction strategy. All right. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. Now, the debt toll, sadly, uh, of that accident we talked about uh, a while ago uh, has risen to 34. This is on the Elmina Commenda Road, that accident that occurred. Richard Kujanyaku could given us details. Well, earlier reports was that 29 persons had died, uh, but the debt toll has risen to 34 now. That's the latest on this particular accident that occurred on the Elmina Commenda Road. Road, But coming up in business, rice production to get a boost as government plans to give it priority in planting for food and jobs program. Details of that coming up next here on Newsdesk. Stay with us.